Okay, just a very quick one. Oh, I, I hope the JPJC one is not in the class today because it is very far away. Here is Serangoon. Okay, CJ, TM, yeah. TM is quite close. Okay. River Valley, probably online also because it's very far. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. RJ, okay. HCI, NY. Okay, so quite a good mix and diverse a range of JCs that you guys are from. Thank you for sharing. Next, I would like to find out what struggles do you face with GP? It can be for paper one, it can be for paper two, up to you. Yeah. So what are the struggles that you face? Okay, I can just share a very brief one. <laughs> everything okay yeah so um I, examples okay i can see that um i'm not sure how you do it in school but in class like if we have weekly lessons together right we normally have a vocab list every week to test your vocab because it's very important to expand your vocab especially since like paper two requires you to paraphrase every single thing in your own words so if you have very limited vocabulary, right, you're going to have a hard time doing paper two, even if you can find the answers. That's one in terms of vocab. Then in terms of examples, you're also given examples every week for the different themes um, so that you have a huge like repository of examples to use in your essay as well as your AQ. Um, I think in the A5 booklet, you have the AQ, AQ notes, right? Hold on, how much is this? Yes. Um, yeah, in, we have these AQ notes. So maybe I can show you an example of how the example banks look like. I think it should be quite useful. Oh, sorry, it should be quite useful for all of you. Uh, let me see. Ah, okay, I'll show you one terrorism first. So terrorism is one of the themes that you don't scan. <laughs> I'll give you access anyway. So <laughs> um Terrorism is one of the themes that we go through with the J1s this year. It's like global issues, right? So this is my focus of all term three and term four. So we introduce them to all the different like notable events. Some of the questions that have came out for A-levels, right? As well as some sample essays from different people from different schools. Lah. And then also, yeah, so this is basically our example bank. And that's what we will go through in class if you have some trouble. And I think it's quite bite-sized. You can read this. There's always be a Singapore context because we know that AQ is very Singapore-based. So you definitely need that. Then, of course, there are info that you need background on. So you just go and read. read, read. Okay? Somebody is chatting. Oh. Give me a moment. Somebody is outside the class. Sorry about that, someone was in the class. Okay, yeah, so as I was saying, this is your example bank. Lah. So on the other hand, if you want to look, we have vocab also, but I'm not going to show you the list. Yeah, okay. Now, let's start with something easy first. A very basic pop quiz. There are only three questions. Okay, so just join first. Okay, it's not 12, it's three. Behind still got some other questions. Just three questions on very basic facts that hopefully you guys are aware of. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I will start at 16 players. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, start. First one. <laughs> this one is easy. Tallest building in the world. Okay, three, two, one, and it is Burj Khalifa. It is neither of the other three. <laughs> okay. Um so you must be wondering why must you know this kind of thing, right? Because there can be very random comprehension passages about like um buildings or architecture. So the Raffles prelims last year was about buildings and architecture in Canada. Yeah. So this kind of random things also is good to know. Lah. So if you look at the leaderboard, who is at the top? Wow, Thomas. Interesting. Okay, nice. And if you're wondering, Burj Khalifa, this is the thing. I think Qatar Airlines or Emirates, they film their commercial with this girl at the top. And then Tom Cruise also filmed Mission, Mission Impossible at the top of the building as well. Okay. Next one. Okay. Two, three more people. Okay. If no more, I will just start. Okay, I will just start. Whatever. Okay. Next one. Which is the most livable city in the world? Wow. It is Vienna. Okay. Yeah, Vienna has always been the most livable city for many, many years. It's not okay. I, I'm quite surprised people actually voted for Beijing. <laughs> okay, because it's clearly not. <laughs> Fair venue. Okay. Okay. Oh, nice. So you can see who are the ones that got it wrong. <laughs> okay, very good. So we made it all the way to the top. Okay, last question for now. Okay, I'm going to start in three, two, one. Which country ranks first? In the pizza. Yeah, because there's no recent one. It's only 2018 is the last one. Yeah. It's China. Singapore is number two. Yeah, two, two, two for reading, for math, and for something else. I can't remember what's the third one. Yeah, China is one, one, one. Okay, so just take note of this. Okay, very good. Let me see what's next. Uh, be the boy. Yeah. Okay, well, V is going very strong. <laughs> nice. Okay, now we're going to go through the different question types. So give me a moment to load the thing. You can refer to the document that you just downloaded. I will pull out my thing first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay, I will share my screen now so we can all see what's going on. Okay, okay it's kind of highlighted because I went through the other class already. Yay, okay. I'm going to start with question analysis first because when you do your essay question, it's very important to know what question type so that you can choose the appropriate approach to answer the question. Different questions have different required approaches. So if you choose the wrong approach, you would not do very well. You might even fail the question for not meeting the requirements. The first question type is the absolute question over here. How to identify absolute questions? You will look for very extreme words such as not in any way. So every single way, then it's absolute. Or totally, never, ever, should not. These are very, very strong words that help you know that it's an absolute question. And when it's absolute, you are usually going to be invited to disagree with them. Because nothing is ever like black or white. There's always like this gray area. So when you do an absolute question, 
and you disagree, you need to think about exceptions or conditions in which the statement would be true. And to go one step further to score higher in the evaluation, right? You can think, is this condition going to last for a very long time? Or is it going to last only for a temporary period of time? Or is this condition only applicable to certain groups of people or certain countries in the world? These are things you need to consider rather than just thinking of the condition or exceptions on its own like that. It's very flat. Next is a two-factor comparison. So they are just comparing between two things. In this sample question is character development versus academic achievements. These are the only two things you will bring in to go and compare. And for comparison, you always need to determine the criteria. And you should do it in all paragraphs, this comparison. You don't go and give me one paragraph academic, one paragraph character. I will fail you because that is not the requirement of the question. You need to, every single paragraph, do an active comparison based on the criteria. Let me give you an analogy to explain this. For example, if I'm comparing Mary and John, which one is the best student, right? I won't say Mary is this, this, and then John is whatever. I would say Mary is the better student because she has better attendance than John. That is the criteria, attendance. And in that paragraph, I'm going to talk about that. Then, Mary is the better student because she has better academic results. So the criteria would be academic results. Then you just do the same thing for every single paragraph. Okay? Active comparison. Otherwise, 100% you will fail. Next, one versus everything else. So, youths are the key to solving climate change. You know that there are many stakeholders apart from youths who can solve climate change. But, and you'll be very like, tempted to bring in other stakeholders, government, school, family, community, whatever. You can, but do not do it every single paragraph is one stakeholder. You will also fail. Because what you need to do is to focus on the given entity. No one cares about the rest. The focus is on youth. This is very important. Huh? The moment you do other entities, right, you will 100% fail. Let me give you another analogy. So if I say, Thomas is a very good student. Or Thomas is the best student in Hwa Chong JC. Then I will say why, right? I will say Thomas is the best because he has good attendance. He has good results. He serves the community. I wouldn't say Thomas is the best student because Mary is a lazy girl. Because John is a boy who does not do well in school. I don't focus on other people. I focus on the attributes of John. Similarly, in this case, you will focus on the attributes of youths or whatever the given entity is. It can be good governance, it can be the media, it can be politicians, anything. Focus on the attributes of the given entity. You must remember this. Okay. Next, comparison across time. How to identify? They always say today, no longer, in the past. So this is how you identify a time element. And what you must do is you must, every single paragraph, talk about the past and the present. So you'll use terms like, unlike in the past where something, 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 or compared to the past, something, 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 today, something, something, something. So you must keep doing this comparison every single paragraph to meet the requirements of the question. Okay. Following which, we have the, the double POC question. For example, if you look at this, uh, people are too concerned with getting things and spending money. The point of contentions are what? Getting things, spending money, right? So you have four different parts to talk about. Concerned with getting things, not concerned with getting things. Concerned with getting money, not concerned with spending money. So there's so much to do. My advice to you when you do double POC, just skip it. No matter what, just skip it. Because it's very difficult to address all the requirements of this question under your, the time condition of one and a half hours. If you can do it, go ahead. Lah. But if you cannot, then just skip this question. It's really not worth it. Go and do something else. This is too much brain power already. And normally when they give you this kind of question, right, they are just trying to drive you to go and do other questions. Like. They just want to put you off. Okay? And question six is a conditional, quite common questions. They almost they always give you like a condition, they must say, yeah, true, not true. So every condition needs to bring in the every paragraph needs to bring in the condition. Okay, so people can only be happy if they feel they are treated fairly. Yeah. Then you might be tempted to bring others. Yeah, you can also, but you need to go and compare with the condition which is being treated fairly. It's very important. Okay. So never lose sight of the focus of the question. Because if you look at the rubrics, I think focus is one of the factors that they take into consideration. So the moment you lose sight, you won't do well already. And that is just one part of the battle. 
other parts include your vocab, your examples, and your way of writing. But we can't go through so much in two hours. Now, here are some specimen paper questions. We are going to do a quick check. Okay, wait, anyone got any questions or not? Okay, nobody can. Okay, let's do a quick check on the question types. Okay, so go back to the same uh, website with the same code and you can enter it in first. Okay, 54, 64, yeah. Good. Okay, maybe when there's 10, then we will start. And okay, let's start. First one. What is this particular question type? Yeah, it is a two-factor comparison because the two factors are problems and benefits of longer life expectancy. It is not an absolute. There's no absolute turnover here. There's no comparison across time because there's no time element here as well. Condition, not really also. So the only acceptable answer is two-factor. So go and use the two-factor approach. Okay, it's quite worrying that you cannot identify because you will definitely use the wrong approach if you cannot identify. Okay, that's okay. Let's learn. So Bob, Tiger Baby. <laughs> okay, come. Next one. Ready? Attempts to control climate change can never be truly effective. Yeah. That was fast. Okay, let's see. I did ever put the result. Okay, can yes, all of you did very great. It's absolute because of the term never. Good. Wow, nice. Okay, good. Next. This will be quite a popular question. Yeah, this is a very basic to what extent simple polarity. There's no two factor. There's only one factor. What artificial intelligence replacing? Yeah, um, one versus everything. Not really, because you're not gonna bring other things that replace humans. There's no time element. There's no condition. It's only is it large extent, small extent. Okay, this is the most basic question. Okay, let's see who got it right. Anyone who said. Okay, the answer was even in the question already to what extent, right? Okay, it's okay, don't give up. You guys should be able to do this. Okay, it is a, I think, yeah, it's a two-factor comparison. Okay, not one versus everything else because it's only two people. Social media, politicians. There's no condition as well. Okay, very good so far. Nice. Okay, good. So who is at the top? Okay, as technology becomes more sophisticated, if you have clue, this is a hybrid question, but I think you only can choose one option, so you just choose whatever. Okay. Yeah. So if you chose this, 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 you are correct. But if you chose the other three, definitely not correct. Why is it absolute? Uh, because of the term, no. No role is super absolute really, right? Comparison across time, yeah, because technology development becomes more sophisticated over time it becomes more sophisticated and the last one condition is because this is a condition that technology becomes more sophisticated it's also a condition okay. it's not this not this and not this as well okay, okay good next let's go
This one, same thing, there's more than one option, it's a hybrid. Yes, okay, it's an absolute because are irrelevant means totally like not relevant at all. That is the absolute term. Conditional because it is just for the majority of people. It's not for everybody. The condition is only a few people here and there. Okay? It's not one versus everything else. Neither is it a two-factor comparison because there's no two-factor over here. Leaderboard. Okay, V is doing very well. Good. Okay, don't give up the rest. Oops, no more. Okay. <laughs> uh, I hope that was okay. Let me go back to this. Okay, always close this for some reason. Let me open it up. Okay, come. Now, we're going to... So, just now the questions that we went through, right? They were from your specimen paper. So, you know that your teachers are going to set your promo questions based on only the specimen paper because yours is the first year of the syllabus. So this is the only guide that they have when they come to setting questions. You know you have eight questions, you only have to choose one. Lah. There used to be 12. Now you have a limited choice, which can also be a good thing. That's that the content tends to like mix together already. So like, for example, look at seven. Seven is tech with arts, right? Yeah. So these are things that's happening. Keep it on. Yeah. Okay, next. Writing your introduction. Ah, oh, so highlight those. Okay. Take note, all parts need to be connected by transition words. You're already in JC, so I think this is something that I don't need to go and teach you guys because at all levels, you all should be able to do this already. Now, for your intro, please always start with a hook. No matter what, start with a hook. Whether it's a quote, Famous book, narrative statistics, or definition, just always give this. Let's remember that. My recommended one would be this, captivating story or example, because Cambridge did specifically mention that they love it when students write very captivating stories in the examiner reports. Very, very specific. Okay? And what they really dislike is when people write this in our interconnected and globalized world. Okay, it's very vague, very general. You're not saying much. And the whole wide world is writing like this. So do not write that. You won't have your marks deducted if you write this in our interconnected world. But you will not get extra credit for your language or for the overall paper. So if you were to write a very good story, then you will be able to score higher in terms of your language. Lah. But please do not ever write in our interconnected and globalized world in your introduction. Okay, that is the worst way to write. Next, you need to establish and explain the tension. So what do I mean by the word tension, right? It is the both sides of the coin. So for example, if you say technology has replaced the role of AI, you need to say, while the technology has brought about many benefits to humans, humans do face some risk or threats by AI. So there's a tension to show that there are both sides of the coin and that you have acknowledged it. Don't make it too flat. Tension is important. Next, you need to say that you have a stand. The last thing you want to do is to say to a certain extent, please never ever say this. Okay? You need to large extent, small extent. Okay? Must be very clear about it. Okay. Then give a preview. A preview is a preview of your points. What points are you going to write in your essay? When you write your intro, you will have already known it because you have done your planning. If you can never write this or you cannot do this, means you never plan. Lah, okay? So please make sure you do your planning before you write your essay. Then your intro, you can write something good. And why we want to write a story here, right? So that later when you write your conclusion and you tie back your conclusion to the story you mentioned at the start, that will give you higher marks for your language also. Why? Because it shows level of planning and organization. So please do that if you can. And how to do that? Just keep some stories in mind in your head that you can use for the different themes. So for example, if you read about maybe Malala, the story of Malala, you can use it for social issues. You can use it for politics. 
Yeah, then you can tell her story very greatly. Okay. So uh, next, Cambridge also write, wrote, do not write excessively long intro, like half a page. I think this is a little bit long, okay? Because it makes your clarity not so, it makes your essay not so clear. Just one third to one quarter is okay. Don't write too long. You don't have time anyways, right? So just remember this. Now, identify the parts of a paragraph. Let's jump straight to the story one, okay? So just now somebody in the chat was asking how to write a narrative. Yeah, this is a sample of a narrative story. As you all write this, okay, please take five minutes to identify the stand, the hook, the preview, and the tension. Okay, it's 11, 38 now, uh, 36 now. We'll go through at 11, 40. Okay, go and highlight, underline, what do you think is the stand, the hook, the preview, and the tension? And if you are done, you can do the rest the same for the other one as well. Okay, for this too. Do this. Okay, just one more minute. I think most of you are done quite quickly. Okay, come. Let's start. Let's start from the front. Hello. Okay, come. Tell me. What is the hook in this story, which lines? One, two, three, four, here. Yeah. Okay, it's actually the whole thing from here until here, yeah. Okay. So this is what you will call the hook. And it's a very interesting hook. Why? Number one, it has very specific date. So it gives you credibility. If you tell a story and you don't give specific details, then you sound very fake. On 9 October, after sitting for an exam, so you are creating that imagery in the head. Wow, after exam, she's very relaxed, going to enjoy her life. However, 15-year-old, so the, the description here, 15-year-old, right, gives this idea that she's very, like, um, vulnerable. Okay, she needs protection. Took a bus home through the idyllic Swat Valley. So later, this idyllic world will serve as a form of just, juxtaposition because idyllic is like peaceful, serene, tranquil. However, after that, she got shot in the head. So that is the juxtaposition that it creates. And then the word unbeknownst to her creates some sort of suspense because what did she not know? What she did not know was that a single bullet to her head was about to change her life. So this part over here, right, shows you how impactful it is because just one bullet can totally change her life. Not just hers, but also that of many females in the world. 
So after the incident, Akihira swept across the world, generating an outpour of sympathy and anger. It is how you tell a story. A lot of adjectives, a lot of adverbs to go and describe, not just that, stating the facts, but telling the story. So this is something you should have learned in Sec 1, Sec 2, like writing descriptive writing. So yeah, okay, come next. What is the tension? Here, right? Okay, because there are two sides of the coin over here. Publicity undermined the reputation, which means their reputation went down the drain. But at the same time, women's rights also advanced many steps forward. So this is the tension because you can see that there is a contrast. Then next, okay, what is the preview? Where? Oh, here is it? Okay, it's actually the full thing over here. Here are the points that he's going to include in his essay. Number one, he has the propensity to have negative repercussions. So when you have bad publicity, you tend to have bad things happen to you. Maybe you get cancelled, you lose your job, you lose income. Those are the negative repercussions. But at the same time, people have the agency to turn the tides, which means people have the power to change the story. They are not just there like some stupid person just there cannot do anything about the situation. They can respond, they can react, they can change the situation. That's one of the opposing points already. And next, attention can be good for business. So this is another point that he uses to say why bad publicity is not all bad. Because people say any form of publicity is still good publicity, right? And finally, it has the potential to empower the marginalized. So this person did a three one. Three positive supporting points for his own stand and one opposing point, which is the negative repercussion over here. So these are the four points he has written. He will write in his essay and it's very clearly stated. And of course, he did well because he mentioned his stand to a very large extent, very clearly. It's very direct. He agree, he disagree. And that is something that you need to write. Because many times people don't have a clear stand in the intro. Then we don't know where you're going with this essay. So please state it clearly. To a large extent, to a small extent. Never to a certain extent. Okay, So this is how you write it. Okay, next, something similar. It is about um, a shooting in a mosque. Similar uh, structure. We have very clear dates over here. Right? So up to here up to the Facebook, this one, the story a bit long. Okay, so the hook is like that. Oh, okay, can okay, okay. Yeah, then over here, it is the date, some, same thing, specific. So when you tell a story, go into the specific. You don't need to remember a lot of stories, just remember a few that you can use for different types of essay. Next, a gunman entered the mosque, same thing, specific. It's not just any random mosque, but the name of a mosque is here. And how did he shoot people? He did not just shoot them. He fired at them indiscriminately. He just sprayed the gun all over. And he never just killed many people. He killed 42 people. Specific details. Next, he said senseless. So this is how you include your own personal voice, which will give you additional credit for your language. Personal voice is important. Rather than just reporting, it is good if you could inject your own opinions into this essay as well. Next, more details, 17 minutes, entire duration of the attack, from the drive to the mosque to the drive away. After the attack, copies were propagated through other sites, while at least 15 million uploads were detected. So once again, very, very good details. So this is a very strong introduction already. Next, this is the tension over here. As you can see, there's a debate. There is some sort of disagreement whether social media promotes diversity or whether what is actually diverse. Then he said, social platforms are indeed places where they can, discussion and exchanges can occur as they encourage free speech and everything. So all this is his preview. What is lacking in his 
point, right, is his asset, that is his stand. So he must be like, therefore, I agree to a large extent or to a small extent that social media platforms really encourage a variety of viewpoints. So what I did over here is I went to go and paraphrase the topic sentence over here, the question over here. Instead of copy and paste, you need to go and change it and add on a very clear stand. That would make it a lot better. Okay. Here, yeah, we can sort of infer what the stand is, but it would be a lot better if you can just say clear writing. That's how you can do it. Okay, now okay, I will give you guys like one more minute. Okay, one more minute. Okay, okay, okay let's move on. One quickly. Okay, I'm not going to go through the rest. The rest you can read. Maybe I just bring our attention to the last one about the key concepts. So when you want to define key concepts, right, you need to give them interesting things that they probably never knew. So like the word muse denote the role of a museum and everything. Don't tell them something that they know. Like social media is what, what, what. Everyone knows that. So not interesting. Don't go and write. There's no value. But for example, this muse in museum is something that not a lot of people would have known. So it's a very good intro because people will be like, oh, I didn't know that. Then they want to continue reading more and more. Okay? And this person did well because clear stand as well. So make sure you write very, very clear stand. Don't like hide it somewhere and expect the person to go and find it for you. Okay? So that's fine. Now, okay, you're going to have to write one on your own. But before that, I just want to check whether you know what's going on. So please just get in. I think it's just one question. Okay, I'm going to start now. It's a very quick one. Okay. Which is not part of the intro. Yeah. Book. Okay. Book. Really? Yeah, it's actually just a pill, your pill, like your normal pill paragraph. Okay. Yeah. So I think most of your oh there's no leaderboard because oh it's a quiz. Yeah, I don't know why it's not either, but not next. After going through the different choices, right? Just out of curiosity, what would you gravitate more towards? Okay, this is not a, this is not a contest. I just kind of just want to see. <laughs> okay. Because some people, maybe they like statistics. Maybe they, or some like quotes. I think quotes is very interesting also, right? Yeah, so there's no like wrong or right. I just really want to see. Yeah. So my advice to you, since most of you like stories or whatever, and Cambridge likes it, right? Just come out with a very interesting story. Like, don't come out from your ass, lah. Just go and read the news, think of something interesting, and do more research on it. Then that will do you very well. And you can keep using the same story for different essays, because ultimately, right, Cambridge is only going to look at your essay once. I know your school teacher is going to see many, 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 many times. But it doesn't matter. You use it more, you become more expert. You know all the details. You know how to manipulate the info to suit the question. So don't care if your teacher likes it or not. Your focus should be on Cambridge at the end of the day. Okay, be an expert. Uh, next one is what? Uh, oh, there's no OV now. Okay, now, um, I need you all to go and try writing out the thing. Uh... Did y'all bring a PLD? Uh? No. Uh. Okay. Hmm. It's okay. Um, yeah. Okay, you can choose to write either practice one, practice two, or practice three. Okay. For those who are online, right, y'all can just submit your thing over here. Okay, I'll share the link here. For those who are here, y'all can just write and I'll walk around to check. Okay. Yeah. So, 
Let me just paste it in the chat so you all can access it. Now it's 11.50, you can start at 12.05. Okay, you can try, practice one, practice two, practice three. You can use the info there, you can use your own info, I'll leave it up to you. Okay, but it's good to practice this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will just create a table for those. You here? Okay, it's good to participate so that I can look through lah, and you can apply what you have learned.
for those who are here, if you're done, you can just telegram me a picture of your writing. Okay, then we'll go through here together. Yep, yep.
Okay, done. Done. Let me go online class also. Oh, it's twelve oh six already. <laughs> okay, are y'all mostly done? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll go through the online one first, and for those in class, I will walk around in a bit to go and check on you guys, lah. Okay. So don't worry about that. Okay, let's look at the online one together now first. Let me zoom in. I think we read some really good stuff. Okay. This is the biggest, oh, super big. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so practice three, this person wrote, geniuses are made, not born. It's a well-known quote. Um, I think the phrasing are a bit funny, la, but this is still acceptable. Nothing wrong grammatically with it. He made his three daughters into genius by giving them intense chess training. Okay, as a result. So this was a good connector. Then, what was very good about this was a rhetorical question. So you all can always use one or two rhetorical questions in your entire essay. Don't keep asking them back again and again and again. But this is a very good rhetorical question to make the reader think about, oh, is it really talent? Make the reader question themselves. And in this day, yeah, and this person followed up by a very short sentence. So that's good because short sentences convey a very strong impact. But everyone is part of a seemingly endless red race. So I kind of change it from this because this is a bit flat. There's no personal voice. Personal voice come in the form of you telling them that you feel that this red race seems like there's no finishing point. 
and then emerge victorious rather than just win because there's a dramatic effect over that. Then short sentences, good, this is so true, then my matter, yeah. Okay, very good, first paragraph. Okay, intro paragraphs are important for a good first impression. For this, the hook is also very interesting. Okay, at the tender age of 15, Greta did this. Then, good transition words, soon. Okay, and then she's not the only one. Good short sentence for impact. So when you go and mix your short and your long sentences, as well as your rhetorical, right, you're showing the examiner that you can handle sentences of different complexities. Simple one, long ones, those are good. Okay, with Malala being the Nobel Prize laureate, good, good phrase. Some people call them winner, but it's actually laureates. Okay, fighting for the right in the US, it's clear that Anjeda is here to call out. Very good. Fight the stereotype. Okay, if the pool, very good. So when you use terms like this, right, there's a very strong personal voice, and this will increase your language marks. So please take note of how to inject personal voice in your writing rather than just being super flat. Okay. Next, climate change is a serious, is seriously an ongoing problem that countries are addressing slowly. Germany is fading out. There's hope to break down task. It is possible. Okay, a little bit short. You may want to dramatize the front part a bit. It's an ongoing problem, addressing slowly. This one needs a little bit more elaboration. This is good, and this is good. But maybe you want to elaborate a bit more. He need review, but elaboration. Good. Okay, let's look at six. Okay, six. Uh, Tumba address assembled world leaders. Wow, very good use of dates, specific, so we know that you are not fluffing. Tumba... Okay, at, 16, at just 16 years old. Good. So, you convey that this is a very, very young age for people to do this kind of thing. She ignited a movement. Good. Ignited is a good word. It's self-started. More drama. A clarion call. Wow. Good. Wow. For, for immediate action against climate change. She became a global icon for impassion. Good. So, you see this person use very good adjectives to go and describe all the nouns he included. A solitary stride outside evolves into a worldwide movement inspiring millions of young. Wow, very good. Underscore the potential, prompting us to question the readiness. Good. Instead of saying making us, right, this person is prompting, very good. In my opinion, although use okay, point, 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 as such, I agree to a large extent that young people, oh, very good, very clear stand. So this is a super solid paragraph. Nothing much to change definitely leaves a very good impression. So the whole purpose of this exercise is to go and learn from what other people have done very well. Okay, so this is a very, very good paragraph for a J1. I assume it's a J1. Okay, but this is really very good. Okay, okay next. Seven Swedish activists, when she leveraged social media to bring attention. Good. Since then, she has inspired a worldwide movement. Fridays for Future. So this is good. Good detail. Strike turned global. Very good phrase also. It's from her own local scale to a global scale. Beaming representation of how youths are starting to take charge. Good. Very good. Channeling their motivation and drive, driving to intellectual rigorous for rap. Okay, good. So this is the preview, right? And then finally, I depicted. Okay, so this person is probably trying to do attention. I can see attention slightly. Okay. But maybe there's no time to go and write stand. So we just need the stand at the back. Okay, so they did very well. You guys telegram me already? Nope, nobody telegram me. <laughs> and my later I'll walk around and check for you guys. Lah, okay, but you guys did a very good job for those online. For the physical one, I'll walk around and check in a bit. Okay, don't worry. Okay, now moving on. Uh, Y'all did very well. Okay, really very good. Okay, my Microsoft Word just closed again. Okay, <laughs> we are going to go into OV right now. So there are a few things that you need to take note of the OV in case um, you have not already taken note of them. Is that you need to start off by distancing yourself from the opposing viewpoint. Otherwise, you sound like confused and contradicting of your own stand. So you need to say other people say that point, right? And the other people is who? Can be proponents of the opposing stand or contrarians of your own stand. So you need to go and disown it. If you don't, then you're going to sound confused and contradicting. You cannot say, I agree, but then I disagree. Cannot. 
Okay, that one secondary school may be okay, but in JC, no. Uh, yeah, followed by verbs. So you must use verbs. Don't use say. Say positive, ever, postulate, champion, assert, decry. Okay, just take note of that. And then state the opposing argument. So if you look at these examples, uh, you see, they say some critics. So they distance themselves already. Critics. What do the critics do? They believe instead of say. Some simple things like that can make a huge difference in your writing. Okay? Same thing. Opponents and critics. What did they do? They postulate. Ah, you can use this as well. An example three. Detractors. What do detractors do? They maintain. That means they stand their ground. They hold firm on their point of view. Okay, so that is how you can write it out. It's really, really good. Okay, so I don't know what your school tells you, but my suggestion to you is to, after your intro, straight away go to the OV already. Don't jump into your SV. I know some schools say OV put at the back. Um, I don't know. My style is to put it at the front. If you look at the Raffles kids also, we, we, they do it um, over at the front also. Okay? Yeah. I think some VJ kids do that also, but you do see some essays, they still put it at the back. And why is they put it at the front, right? It's because you don't want to disrupt the flow of the writing. You Later, you SV, SV, then suddenly you break into an OV, then it's very disruptive. But people convince you already, then suddenly you're like, huh? right? So you want to like address the opposing viewpoint first, rebut it, and then support, support, reinforcing your rebuttal and your overall stand. And that will make a stronger and more convincing argument. Okay, take note of that. This is just my recommendation. You can check with your teacher because some people are very anal about writing at the back for some reason. Okay, I don't really care where you write it, but as long as you have an OV, then that's good enough already. Okay. Finally, use connectors to link your explanation of the OV. You don't just put the OV there, park it, and then just move on with your R, your rebuttal. No, you need to explain it to show that you have fully considered the other side of the uh, argument. So you'll say, yes, this is true. Understandably, this is true. Undeniably, this is true. You say, 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 say. Then later on, then you go to your part then. La. Okay, so point two is your second part already after you wrote, wrote that. Then you do your P-E-E-L after you do your grantor or whatever. P-E-L of the OVR, you must peel the OV. You don't leave the OV as one topic sentence there and call it a date. No, peel the OV. Show that you have considered it. Otherwise, it's not a full essay. Remember that. Even though it's not your point, peel it still. After you peel it, ah, then you have more room and more material to work with for your rebuttal. So there are a few ways you can go and do your rebuttal. Number one, you can say that it's very narrow-minded, very parochial, very myopic. So you can use all these words in your essay. What does this mean is that there are instances where whatever the opposing argument is saying is not true. So you can point that out. Ah, then you, that's your narrow-minded parochial rebuttal already. Okay? And I know you keep saying this word. This word means on the surface or superficially. So you can use it as well as a connector at the start. It's a very fancy, I think it's a French or Latin word. Sounds French. Yeah, it's a fancy word for saying on the surface. Okay? Uh, yeah, that is good for your language. Okay, next, you can say that. Yeah, on the surface, it looks like what, but then reality is what. La. So you can go and say this also. This is another one. Third way does not address the root cause. This is normally used for question like solutions question, like good governance, social media or whatever. You can use this as a rebuttal. Whatever solution they are proposing does not address the root cause. That's why it's not a good idea. Okay, For solution, la, take note. And the fourth one is the short term versus long term. Okay, equality, maybe last time can, now cannot, in the future, we don't know. This is how you can do it. I'm just like running through this quite quickly because it's quite self-explanatory. What I'm giving you is the lenses through which you can go and rebut. After you rebut, then you just see what other people have written long. I think this is how you can do it. This looks a bit long, so your OV can be one paragraph and your R can be a whole new separate paragraph as well. Okay, just split them. That would be good. If you put one whole long chunk, like that, it's very difficult to read. And it's very hard to suss out your, your main points over here. Okay. Oh, so I wrote this. Okay, I'm not saying this is the best. But um, the purpose of this right, is to show you that if you don't really have a lot of examples, you can like scratch the surface with multiple smaller examples. Let's look at this question together. Huh? 
women's rights issues are largely resolved today. How far is this true in developed society? So this is kind of a time kind of question comparison. Huh? So remember I did what I said we're supposed to do, right? We distance ourselves. So I use the term advocates. Not me, but other people who say that women's rights have been alleviated. So this is a paraphrase, paraphrase of the question. Like women's rights have been mostly alleviated. It's a paraphrase. I don't go and copy and paste. This will give you higher language marks compared to someone who just copy and paste. Next, remember I used the word. I did not use say. I used posit, postulate, whatever. Go and use those words inside. Then I just paste the OV over here. Yeah. Okay. This is the OV already. Like. Yes, women have achieved many things that were unthinkable in the past. So I'm addressing the comparison in time already. And that is good because the question is a comparison time thing, like past versus present. And you set up your, uh, your premise for rebuttal already. Pre, prima facie, you're saying on the surface. Yes, you are leading the examiner to think that, okay, you are just saying it's on the surface already. Many developed nations have made significant progress regarding the multitude of issues that infringe upon the rights of women. Then I give these common names. Even though I'm not really sure what they did, I just throw in their names. Okay, I wrote this under time conditions. So, Oprah, Kamala Harris, Melinda Gates, and Melana. Oprah is this black host, right? Kamala Harris is the first woman of color to be the vice president of America. Melinda Gates is Bill Gates' wife, and Malala is the one that kind of shocked. These women come to mind when we think of women in our world today. Women are females who epitomize the seeming liberation from subjugation. So you see, seeming. This is a word that you can use to cast doubt. Yeah, it looks like it, but maybe it is not that. So you use the word seeming to give that kind of impression that characterize women in the past. Women have having a job used to be unimaginable, let alone holding political positions. Yet the fact that their household names for women in power may belie a more insidious reality that they are the exceptions rather than the norms. So this is my uh, topic sentence here in my rebuttal. Okay. Then more, more attention. While we celebrate the leadership of Jacinda Ardern and admire the wealth of Rihanna, I think she's the most, the celebrity female, right? Female celebrity who earns the most money last year. Then number two is Taylor Swift last year. Yeah. But maybe after Iran's tour, Taylor Swift would be the most wealthy already. It's imperative that we acknowledge that women everywhere are still fettered by the lack of gender inequality, blah, blah. Ah, then I give a very distinct example, very detailed one, because probably this was the only one I can remember back then. Okay? But before that, if you're not very sure, just drop here and there to show that you have a global example, right? And people from different walks of life. You have media, you have politics, you have business, you have activists. So all these different women, it will not be as good if you give all from media or from politics, right? Then, instead of just dumping the example, I also elaborated on it, right? This is an elaboration on the example. This is a global thing. Then after that, I went on to a more personal level about domestic violence for females, which is quite high, higher than males. Then I did what some of you guys did earlier, which was ask a rhetorical question. So why? So, okay, then after that, I link together. So you can use taken together as one of your connectors because I know normally when you all write links, you all put hands, therefore, thus, but you can use something different, which is taken together, which means all the points that you have written, you put them all together, ah, then you say this, okay? Then you end with a very strong statement. To claim that they have been rectified today would be totally parochial. Very, very strong. Normally, I would advise hedging, which means you use shall, would, like words that is not 100% certainty. But in this case, I think you can totally say it's parochial because it is what it is. It is very narrow-minded to just look at these women and say that everything is well and fine and dandy, which is not the case. Okay, So this is something that I go through with you. So now let's go on back to the mentee for a quick break. That's a very quick OV check. Okay, I think there are two questions only. Yeah. Okay, any questions? Nope. Okay. Come OV check up. Uh.
Okay, I'm gonna start in three seconds. Three, two, one, and I will start already. Okay. At the start, which word fits this sentence? For O V R O V. How can it be advocates? You're writing O V, right? Right? You're writing O V, so the person will be saying something opposite from you. So only detractors is applicable over here. If you write advocates, proponents, or supporters, there are people who say the same thing as you. So why would you write that? You want to say that it's your own point of view, one, right? So. Moreover, this is an OV paragraph. OV means people opposite. So people opposing our viewpoint are known as the detractors. Not advocates, not proponents, not supporters. Okay, take note of this. Okay, don't worry. Let's go to the next one. Okay, there's one last one. It's question 12 already. Okay, I'm going to count. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's start. Okay, yeah, this should be advocates because people who support the opposite stance from you, they would posit something. Okay, so it cannot be skeptics because skeptics are people who like have doubts about the opposite stance. Same thing for critics, people who are against the opposite stance. Okay, so yeah, it's advocates. So let's look at the leaderboard for today. Okay, very good. Who is V? Is V in this class? No? Okay, I'm like, great. Oops, I've reached the end of the... No, haven't ended the class yet. Lah. Okay, now it's your turn to go and write the... Uh, write the what? Lah? Write the OV paragraph. Okay, for those who are in this class, please detach so I can look at your intro and write your name on it also. Okay, if you all need stapler, I have. If you all haven't stapler... Good. Write your name so I know who is. Okay. For the rest of you, please go and write the OV. Okay. OV, I will enter it. Okay, now it's 26, we can stop at 40. Okay, right, and OV, R paragraph. Okay, yeah, right, and OV, R paragraph, please, over here. It's tough for you, five, right? Okay. Okay. Um. Who needs to clap?
if you are here and you want to do on the Google Docs, it's also fine. Actually, I will just copy the link and create a QR for you guys to scan. I leave it up to you. Okay, I completely leave it up to you. Wow, Shala. Okay, it's too big. Up to you. If you want to write, you can type, I'll leave it up to you. Okay, don't worry.
he has a factory right then he has to take a photo or something he has to use he has to use painting brush he has to use Chinese to use that's what you're obvious that's what it is yes It's 45. Just take one last minute. For those who are physical, don't worry. I, will, I can still look through after that class. Okay. But if you're online, yeah. Just finish it up. Okay. Let me stop share for a while. So I can look something Come. Yes. 
let's share screen first. Yeah. Um, give me a moment. Okay, y'all can continue writing first while I load this. Okay, so I was marking all your thingy. <laughs> okay, let me give you that first. Okay, so I think there were two that were quite good. This is the first one that I want to go through, which is by, I can't remember who anyway, uh, Jeremiah, right? Yes, okay. Um, yeah, so he wrote about climate change. So I think it's practice school or something. Okay, so he gave the example, very specific, Hong Kong, flash, flood, submerging, metros, okay, trapping innocent drivers. So you can see a lot of adjectives used to create this story then. Adverbs also, right, are becoming devastatingly more common and then increasing population of the world are experiencing blah, blah, blah. So all these, very good. So I just added this word, uh, it's descent to climate catastrophe because you are going downhill, right? Rather than just, it's, there's no like downhill kind of image in your head. But otherwise, I think this is good. Okay. Then there's another one by Trinity. Is it you? This one, right? Yeah. So Trinity did another approach. She used the quotes by Nelson Mandela, the use of today's uh, leaders of tomorrow. What she did was she never just dumped the quote there, she engaged with the quote subsequently, which is what you all need to do. But unfortunately, many people just dump it there and then move on to the to what they want to say already without engaging with it. So I think this is also good, right? This is something for you all to learn. Okay, now let's look at what people have written for this OVR. Okay. Advocates, just take note uh, as we go along to see what can be improved, what is good. Okay. Advocates of the notion bring about predicaments would fervently postulate rather than say. You want to show that they are very enthusiastically going to say that it creates fake news. Because when you talk about fake news, I think the whole white world is going to talk about it as well. And you don't really distort attention, you divert it from pressing issues to one that is more frivolous. And I think this unicorn story is actually by Elon Musk OpenAI. And most people did not even realize that they had been duped. So this is a story that you can use. And then it's a very good connector by this person to add on. So good connectors. Overall, good, good, uh, good narrative. Next, okay, detractors of the notion, good. So you use whatever we've learned. Would argue that education only assesses the IQ of our brains, while EQ also plays an important role. Okay. Okay. Yeah, then you have a definition and you must also elaborate more. So just now, she, this person didn't, but this person now did. So that's great. And then they give the examples over here. So that is good. Okay, I think I haven't finished yet, but yeah, you kind of got it already. This is a clear signpost that you're talking about your OV already. Okay. Then there is proponents of the notion pose of poses more harm than good would propose that AI is capable of uh, being utilized, yes, to brainwash the masses. Ah, yeah, so very interesting um, example over here. I think it's in the notes also. Okay, uh, but one thing you need to do, right, is you need to go and explain a little bit more. Yeah, rather than just dumping an example, yeah, you should just say, what is the implication of this example that you put over here, rather than just throwing it there. Okay, similar advocates of the view put forward. Yeah, okay, yeah, so this is your... Cambridge Analytica uh, scandal over here. Okay, so one thing you all need to remember when you all use examples, please don't just dump it there, elaborate on it, talk more about it, relate it back. Okay, and finally, seven, eight. So seven is also quite good. I, I like this short, like deep fake, Cambridge Analytica. It will be better if you can come with one more, like one, 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 three, right, total. Okay, so the only issue I would see is maybe using two sentences that start with the same word. This in this, surely you can think of other connectors to start your sentence with 
So go and vary your sentence structure. That will score higher. Because if your whole essay is a lot of this, 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 right, then you're not going to do very well in terms of language. Okay, you all must take note of this. Uh, I think this is a good word. It's very short and sweet. So good. Finally, critics postulate that no matter the number of benefits and as you capable of being utilized, yes, using it in open AI slides like journalism and music creation. To further prove this, a mere 21. Okay, good. So you can see that he used words like a mere 21 years old and also a very good connector to further prove this. Okay, then AI can be used for that. Okay. Okay, I don't have time to do the intro and uh, the conclusion with you guys uh, in the notes, right? Okay, the notes also kind of closed already. But <laughs> yeah, I think most of you did a very good job of this. Okay. Sorry, give me a moment. Just close this up. Okay, most of you did a very, very good job. So we're just going to leave it there. Okay, yeah, for the rest of you, here, I will look at it. Fast, don't worry. Okay. The try yourself is done. Conclusion, okay, I got no time, I'm sorry, go and read on your own. And the end, finally, I know we've reached the end. So please help me scan this QR code. The admin will go and look for people to give prizes to. Okay. And if you have any questions, feel free to DM the Instagram guy, he will message me. <laughs> or you can just text me directly, so it's fine. Okay. So that's all I have. I hope you found this very useful. Okay. And for the people online, y'all can go already after you do. Okay. Thank you so much for being a part of this.
I haven't seen and want to let me see. Good. That other look looks like it's well done. I don't know. I don't know. 